Hello, and we are live with SEO Meetup Melbourne. How, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> My name is Nick Ranger, and this is Mr. Sajo George. Sajo, say hello. Hello, hello. Sajo. <laughs> we are here we with. Do that every um, time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have the worst, the worst daggy jokes. <laughs> um, <laughs> We are joined here with the wonderful, the lovely, and the incredibly brilliant James Comedy. James, thank you so much for being here with us. Well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Um, for anyone who um, doesn't know who James is, um, James works for um, Prosperity Media, who is in New South Wales. Um, and he is, if I can pull up and find his bio right now, I can't find it right now, but he is um, pretty much, um, he's both like a, a practitioner, he's a web dev who is turned into a business um, owner who then decided after a while, you know what, um, I'm just going to go um, and not be the boss anymore and work for one of the best um, best companies, which is Prosperity Media. So thank you so much for your time, mate. Did I get that wow. kind of right? That's kind of right. Um I've also been involved in a lot of events um, and uh, hello to everyone who's joined from the WordPress Sydney meetup group. Um, I did a, a shout out earlier telling everyone to come and watch. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been involved in the, uh, the WordPress community in Sydney um, for a while and Brisbane. Um, and uh, hey, Daniel. Daniel works for Prosperity, <laughs> so <laughs> he said hi. Um, yeah, and uh, I've been. Uh, thanks, Dan. <laughs> um, I've been, uh, I don't know what this the, means, but I'm going to put it up here anyway. <laughs> you'll find out in the halfway through the presentation. Don't worry. Don't worry. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi, Joe. Um, so yeah, everyone's joining from. Got the quite website. a few fans. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, I think I started the WordPress group in 2015. I started attending kind of like, like you, Nick, where, you know, just came along to a few events. And then after a while, you know, I mustered up the courage to speak at one of them. And I think there was like 50 people and I'd never done a presentation before. And I was like, freak it out before it started. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, uh, um, I think I did a topic on WooCommerce or something. And then after time, I just started uh, getting into helping out and organizing and then i started helping out with the big conferences word uh, word camps um thanks michelle um and yeah and then uh, that's uh that's uh, how i started getting involved in meetups that's fantastic hi jim, hi, jim. <laughs> yeah so um i'll kind of just run everyone through just a little bit of housekeeping um Hello and welcome. This is uh, the Melbourne chapter, I guess, of um, SEO Meetup. Um, so generally how it goes is we say our, our hellos and, and um, get um, introduce everyone to our guest speaker today, who is James. Um, but generally we go through and um, say a little bit about what's been happening over the last month um, in SEO um, over the course of September. So, of course, um, so um, George, who is the co-host, is um, also the, um, has TDLR um, Marketing, which has a fantastic newsletter. If you're not subscribed, I, I wholly um, recommend that you do. Um, it's not just my friend um, that runs that newsletter. It's also something that myself and, uh, like, all of my colleagues are also subscribed to. So that's where we get a lot of... Um, a lot of our news and pretty much what's going on in the biz. So, um, Sajo, I'll um, leave it. Uh, I'll turn it over to you just to kind of give us a little bit of an update as to what's been happening over the course of September. Enlighten us. Yeah, <laughs> you're, so, like, you're every month. Yes, <laughs> uh, every month the recommendation keeps getting better and better. So, <laughs> thanks for that, Nick. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> so um, I'm just more deeper into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, quite a few like you know updates from uh, Google and a few other folks uh, in September. I think one of the biggest ones that a lot of people were talking about was uh, the indexing issues that Google has been facing. And if you look at rank trackers for the past couple of weeks, you'll see that like you know there is a huge flux going on. It started with like uh, Google started to randomly canonicalize URLs 
to like you like random URLs that they wanted. So um, there's no real reason as to why they were picking this URL. It was just random. And like, you know, a lot of people were like, you know, getting their results de-indexed, which was another issue. So I'm sure Peter will have a lot to talk about this because like he was <laughs> like, you know, sharing the URLs with John Mueller and all that related to this. So apparently this issue has been resolved and it's slowly like, you know, getting fixed now. But that was something that a lot of people had issues with. And like if you kind of, you know, see some of your URLs are not indexed, the best thing to do would be go into Search Console, resubmit it, and that brings it up really quickly. Otherwise, yeah. you just have to wait for Google to kind of pick it back up and then you will start to see your results come back in. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the reason why you would see a lot of flux. So if you look at uh, SEM Rush Sensor, I think for the past two weeks, it's been constantly in red, like about uh, two days or three days. So it's like, you know, constantly fluctuating. And the reason was they were just randomly dropping URLs from search. And obviously then like it's, it's not ranking and that's probably why. Yeah. So did you guys notice that at all or? Yeah, we were we were talking about this a little bit um, just before you jumped on, Sajo, because I know you've um, experienced uh, this. I think um, you shared this on um, DMU. Um, but, you know, James, you've experienced this. I've experienced this. I didn't really see um, I didn't really see any changes until maybe like just in the start of October for me. Um, what was your experience, James? Yeah, it didn't really happen on many of the sites I have. It was only isolated to a few. Um, but it wasn't really impacted that that much as well. Like I th think it was, I don't know if it hit other niches more specific than um, like some niches more specific than others, but yeah, it, um, I only really never really noticed it that much. Um, maybe I'm just lucky. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, like it was, a little bit. the ranking just suddenly dropped. So like, if you look at your, uh, hour on hour tracking and analytics, you'll see that Google search results will kind of keep going and then it just dropped because the URL wasn't indexed at all. And then when you go to Search mm -hmm. Console and resubmit the URL, like in a couple of minutes, it picked it up. Just pops so back up, yeah. If you kind of like leave it on, then like you'll probably see a big dip if it impacted those URLs. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I've, I, I um, crazy bug. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm um, kind of noticing, like, you know, Google is kind of getting hit by this more often now. Like, previously, mm -hmm. you used to get this, like, you know, once in a blue moon. And, like, off late in the past, maybe a year or so, like, this has happened multiple times. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of, it's yeah, the I Google is kind of. The AI is taking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's probably going to ruin us all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, um, well, I, I think um, someone's also um, mentioned um, that Ahrefs has a free tier, which is a really, really good segue. James, you were talking to me yeah. about um, the Ahrefs bug. Yeah, well, they had a bug just today. We were, look we were noticing where... Mm. Um, I think yesterday and today, where all of all of the organic traffic results, uh, traffic organic traffic data, basically doubled on every site that I had. Like it was just, and we were checking a lot of sites, and it was just double doubled. Like I was like, oh, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> and I've gone from <laughs> doubled doubled the graph and it doubled in height. It was great. But then um, oh, wow. just just one second, I need to talk to my clients really quickly. I'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hey guys, look at, look at what just happened. Yeah. Pat on the back. <laughs> screenshot, it, screenshot it before it goes away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then and then I think someone posted on their Facebook group saying, you know, what's going on, and then it, now now what it does is it shows a flat line instead of a increase. So they they acknowledge the bug and then. Yeah, I don't know what's what's going on there. They've got some data issues with reliability of data, I think. Mm. I'm guessing, like, you know, a lot of people would have signed up to Ahrefs using Search Console, and now they've got all this data for all those, like, uh, sites. So I'm guessing that messed it up somehow. Maybe. It's just me thinking out loud. I don't know. Maybe they... I, I 
they haven't updated their data for a while. Um, like they you know, because the jump shot data is no longer able to be used. Yeah. So they, I think they haven't updated their um, keyword index for a long time now. Um, and they've got some issues with that, and I don't know what they're going to do about it. But I think maybe giving it away, giving it a, all this um, Ahrefs away for free in order to connect to your search console, you know, maybe that's a way to try and combat that. Who knows? Yeah. Mm. What and do you think about that, all like, the people... You don't have to necessarily connect search console. That's one of the options. But, you know, you can yeah. just use, like, yeah, uh, they, they they a lot file of file it, I think. Yeah. But, but it's, it's easier, so a lot of people would. Yeah, but it's just on that, like, it, it is an opt-in thing. I think a lot of people were quite concerned that, oh, if you're basically just going to be able to dip into my search console and get more of more accurate data about what my site's doing, like, well, isn't that just going to give my competitors a bit more of an advantage? Yeah. I think a lot of people are kind of up in arms about, you know, what that would mean. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think mm. there, was a, there was a lot of discussion in the Facebook group about it. Mm. In the Facebook so group other than I... search volume, like, you know, the rest of the things are there anyways. So it's only like a bit of accuracy that might come into search volume that'll kind of come yeah, yeah. So, mm. yeah, it's, it's only isolated to that. It's not the whole, not the whole exactly. platform. <laughs> it's, yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> it's only two sites that kind of give you that data. And again, it's not going to be 100%. So. It's always yeah. going to be like a directional stuff. So. And yeah. Area Designs reckons don't connect the Search Console API with any WP plugins or Ahrefs. <laughs> <laughs> um, other other things that have um, happened um, over sort of September. Uh, um, yeah. Um, so, so Google I think Shopping. Like one of the other things is, yeah. Google so Shopping. they're going to make it, uh, they're coming out with that in October, I think mid-October, it'll kind of launch mid -October, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty huge. So unless like, you know, if you don't have your feed set up in Merchant Centers, it's time to go do it now because it's almost here and you don't want to miss that gravy train. Mm. Exactly. The canonical search issue only 25% according to Google. So make sure that you're re-indexing your site, um, your pages um, manually if, um, if you're not if satisfied with Google just going back in. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just... SEO equals game theory. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, Google Shopping, like that's going to affect a lot of e-commerce, um, a lot of e-commerce sites. So free listings will essentially be, you know, when they're available to the whole world. Um, they said like it was like, you know, Europe, Asia, and America. Um, I'm assuming Australia that... As well. Australia is going to be wrapped up in that um, Asian that's kind of demographic. Yeah. 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 So they had so, like a post going out, like, and I think Australia was in one of them, and then the other one wasn't there. So mm. yeah, apparently it's coming to Australia as well. I think. Yeah. So Google Maps uh, Center. Of, uh, yeah. So go set it up. Mm. 100%. Uh, some of the other things were like Cloudflare. They have like an analytics platform now. So apparently they're kind of going with the privacy first kind of thing with that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how powerful it is going to be, like in terms of like, you know, conversion data and that sort of thing, if it can track that. Mm -hmm. But apparently, like, it's there if anyone wants to try it out. Uh, they launched a bunch of other things as well, like Cloudflare. Uh, they announced support for a new image format, so AVIF, I think, um, which apparently has better compression than uh, WebP and JPEG and PNG and all that. Uh, again, the support for that is very limited at this stage, but you can turn it on like by just clicking a button with Cloudflare. So if you want to try that's it out cool. again, like, yeah. Cloudflare do uh, so they have, And uh, one of the other things that they announced was uh, they have like a uh, optimization suite for WordPress, specifically for WordPress now. So you can download the plugin, hook it up, and connect it with um, their account. So I think it's five dollars for free tier, and if you're on one of their paid plans, it's free. Again, uh, mm -hmm. in essence, what it does is it converts the static site, uh, a dynamic site, into a static version and serves it from their network edge. So 
it's supposed to make your site a lot faster. I haven't played around with it, but that's again something new that they announced that you might want to take a look at. Cloudflare is really coming out with cool features recently. I've noticed. Yeah. In the last, yeah. In the last year or so. Yeah, I think like you know they kind of uh, partnered with the Web Archive recently as well. So when your site is down, instead of like Cloudflare kind of you know pulling up a oh, static this. version it's and so serving cool. it, they will be serving it mm. from uh, Web Archive. So basically, like you know, a lot of URLs will be indexed by Web Archive as well. So if you want to look at the history for anything, now it's going to be much better. So that's my that's understanding good. of it. So yeah. Uh, a lot of other things mm. happened uh, in social media space as well, like LinkedIn rolled out stories uh, and some other formats. Uh, Facebook killed off their 20% text image uh, rule. So That's you can have cool. like ads with all text now if you want to. Uh, a web There's stories, a there is a plugin from. <laughs> but hey, if it kind of helps, like, you know, you stand out from the rest. And like once everybody starts doing it, then like you know it's not going to work. But till then, like, it's <laughs> probably something that you might want to look at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the local service ads they're expanding to uh, European markets, so UK, Germany, France, and a few other countries. So it wouldn't be like you know too far away that we see that in Australia as well. Uh, then Google also announced. Uh, premium version of Google My Business. So this is mm. like where you'll have a Google Guarantee badge in your local listing and map pack and stuff like that. Uh, they, they weren't really forthcoming with like what sort of features, but like some people noticed that uh, it'll only be available in certain uh, niches, like you know, heating and cooling, plumber, that sort of thing, uh, lawyers maybe as well. And uh, you have some enhanced features like you can record your calls so when somebody calls you using uh, Google My Business or like using your local listing, you can record those calls. And uh, there are a few other things as well there. So that's something that you might want to keep an eye out for when it kind of launches in Australia. Yeah, it's, that's um, that's a really interesting one. That um, got a little bit of a Twitter heat on that because I think a lot of people are, are really quite concerned about the crap on the map. Um, and then having like an extra tier of people having to pay for um, essentially like a, their own verification badge. I think, you know, you know, does that what kind of what kind of um, you know what what does that premium sort of give these users? Like, is it kind of like um, like kicking people out who may not be able to afford for this premium service, um, who are like small SMEs and things like that? Uh, I think it's. it's like it's interesting to think about what could be happening, but we don't really know what that's going to look like. Yeah, so that's <laughs> the thing. Like you know, when yeah. Google kind of comes out with any of these things, uh, mm. people will be ready to throw money at it because you know that's where people search for things and that's where conversion happens. Mm. So, mm. like even if like you know, two people in your industry kind of look, like start doing it you naturally will kind of levitate towards kind of doing that because your competition is there, they're getting those clicks if, and they're not coming to you. So you would naturally do it. Most of them would, I would imagine. It's funny yeah, because after I think everyone so. starts doing it, then what then? <laughs> well, yeah, just in the basically same the same problem. Yeah. Then it's like you know, the $100 tier. So then you have the super premium. Yeah. <laughs> they just mm. keep going up and up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how it's gonna work, right? Yeah, I tend to agree with Daniel. Um, I've, yeah, I feel like it's just another way of trying to um, monetize the SERP, if anything else. Yeah. But um, that's yeah, that's, that's it's a given, really right. So that's how Google works. Yeah, yeah. but I, I always think like um, the map pack is always a really interesting one to look at because I think that kind of that kind of a thing always exposes its reliance on the link profile like you know with all those like sort of fly by net websites that pop up um you know you'll see it happen the way are like this random one page website with like 12 million links pointing to it um will sort of pop up and it's you know it's obviously spam but some people will um you know convert on that kind of website and they'll basically sell them as as leads to genuine businesses like 
you know, where's where's the kind of police for that kind of side? I think maybe this is like a way for them to to kind of like get rid of some of that, but at the same time, like I don't know. I feel like that there, there needs to be a lot more work there. Yeah. I don't have a solution for this. If like you know somebody has a solution for this, they'll be multimillionaires and just like <laughs> sitting somewhere sipping whiskey, but you know, nobody has a solution. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I kind of, I kind of think that um, Everhard is is kind of like picking up, you know, what I was putting down with like maybe like the monetized platform removes um, a lot of the spammy, spammy fake sites that kind of just um, pop up and just kind of like have obviously just gamed the system. Um, but at the same time, like who's to say that they're not that they're um, that they can't find ways to sort of um, you know basically pay but still get through? Who knows? Who knows? In <laughs> this, I don't think, um, you know, until we can actually like test it and see what the, this is like for ourselves and what their um, the paywall verification system is like, um, it's kind of a, a little bit up in the air at the moment. Yeah, I think definitely it should remove a lot of, it should remove some of the spam, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm loving the sass. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Whether well, there will always be people change. finding, yeah, no, big changes. No, Let's go. go. Oh, I was just going uh, like, to finish was... my joke. <laughs> uh, go, for, oh, go for it. Like I thought you stopped, so that's when I started. So I, I think there's a no, bit of no, delay it's all there. good. I think there's <laughs> a bit of a delay. <laughs> no, please, yeah. please continue, Sajo. All right. So uh, I think one of the big things that happened in the AdWords space was. Uh, they announced that, like, you know, there won't be, uh, what was that? Just give me a sec. Thinking music. Sorry, like, I'm just trying to find that particular bit of news because it's in the <laughs> ad space. Okay, yeah, so basically, like the search term reports, they kind of, you know, uh, removed some of the data that they're sharing with advertisers and that. So uh, there was a lot of people complaining about it. Uh, so apparently now they will only show you search term report with people who search for a keyword within the last eight hours or for terms that received clicks in the last 30 days or for the random were searched by a significant number of people. So again, like, you know, initially some people were saying like their visibility dropped from about 98% to 78% overnight. So a lot of uh, keyword data that uh, AdWords people used to get, it's kind of going away. So kind of like the no, not provided scenario mm. for SEOs. Yeah. Isn't that but where a lot of the conversions happen there? Well, I feel like so, you know, I, I feel like you're pay you're paying for those keywords, and Google's basically just hiding yes. them from you. So I, I think that's yes. that's the major thing. Like it's, um, it's. I feel like it's only really going to hurt um, campaigns because they're your key they're your keywords. They're the ones that you use to be able to go in, um, be able to f figure out like what you can optimize and what you can do with your campaigns. Like, I I, I don't I don't really understand the lot behind that other than basically making it harder to be to be able to be good <laughs> with, yeah, so using Google Ads. It's kind of like the same part, like, you know, with SEOs. Like, if they kind of give us all the keywords with all the conversion data, then we kind of know exactly what works. Whereas here, yeah, now you kind of have to do that guesswork. And, like, you know, it's kind of like saying, like, put the money on the table, walk away, we'll figure it out and let you know. So it's kind of like that. You get a nice phone call from... Uh... Google support telling you how to improve your campaign because you have no Spoil idea what your campaign's doing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Spoil it. Pay more. Yeah. Broad match. Just destroy, yeah. so, destroy all the machine learning and just start again. Pay us more money. <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, I and don't know. Like, there are some scripts that people have created so you can kind of see what sort of impact this has on your daily conversion and stuff like that. So you might want to start looking at it if you're running ads. Well, that's a lot cool. of people are complaining about like the inability to kind of see what's not working and filtering it out using negative keywords and all that. 
So that is apparently severely impacted by this. Mm. I don't really yeah. understand the thought process behind it, if I'm honest. Why would they? Yeah, neither. Why would they hide it all? Because well, you kind of know like exactly what's working and what's not. And that's the only source where you can know it from. And they hide it. So it's again <laughs> like, you know, that's because they make money, more money on, on the ones that aren't working. Exactly. So yeah. I think that's the only reason. Uh, they might give you like a like, you know, a well crafted pitch saying like, you know, it's to do things with privacy and whatnot and all that. But at the end of the day, it's getting more people to spend more money. And it's as simple as that, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I've just been sassy myself. Is that um yeah, I think that was a really, really fantastic news segment. I think um I think everyone's really dying to to see what um James has to say. So um is is there, do you have anything more to add to that, Sajo, or can we get into No. Nah. Nah, like there are still a lot of stuff, but like again, like you know, I think we've looked at like the important bits in there. And if you want more, awesome. sign up to the newsletter. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sign up the newsletter, um, TLD um, Marketing. Not sponsored, um, but just because it's it's genuinely awesome. All right, James, um, when Thank you're you. ready, share your presentation. We'll share the slides as well so you guys can. Yeah, I can um, put them on slides or something afterwards if you want to um, have a Yeah, that would be through. fantastic. I tried to make the text as big as possible so that it can be read <laughs> through the 720p stream. Uh, all right. And all right. That. Boom, boom. All right, I'm going to go on mute. Um, welcome to the stage, James Carmody. Thank you. Can everyone see that? I hope that's yep. working. Yeah, that looks yes, great, Alrighty. So, uh, welcome to how to plan and build a link or silo structure in WordPress for optimal organization and link preservation. And uh, I guess what I mean by that is um, how to plan out your links so that you do it right from day one and you don't have to uh, change it in the future and have to redirect and lose some lose some traffic potentially. Um, and what I mean by optimal organization is just so it's nice to look at as well, you know. It's, uh, it makes sense and it's um, easy to understand from not only a user's perspective, but a, a bot perspective. Um, and link preservation, um, I'll get to that in, a, in a, just a moment. So uh, who am I? Um, we already did this, but the slide's still there. Um, so for anyone new who's just joined, I'm currently working at Prosperity Media. Um, I used to run my own agency um, basically until I got tired of being the boss um, and uh, decided to um, apply at Prosperity Media, um, which Nick said before was one of the best SEO agencies. Did I get that right? Did I hear that correctly? <laughs> um, I've been building websites since I was fresh out of high school 2013, um, so I'm not that old, I'm not that young either, I guess. Um, and uh, I've been involved in the WordPress community. Um, thanks, Peter. Uh, it was a lot of hours worth of work. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, been involved in the WordPress community since 2015, running events, um, started at the WordPress Sydney meetup, um, and then I started organizing for helping out on the organization team with uh, Will, um, Will Brown, who's who, him and I do this together, um, for 2016, 2018, and then I was lead organizer for WordCamp 2019. If you don't know what a WordCamp is, it's uh, basically a meetup, um, but on steroids, and it's a good place to meet some people and hear some new topics. Um, and I run a few sites um, in a few different niches, um, more recently the medical niche, uh, for uh, respiratory devices, uh, it's a bit of fun. All righty, so just for the beginners here, um, in, in case in case you didn't know, and for the um, for the seasoned developers, 
maybe you can learn something too here, new here. WordPress started in uh, 2003 as a blogging platform, which kind of gave it a really good base for to put out content. Um, over time, you know, businesses started using it and plugins and themes and developers started adopting WordPress. Um, and now WordPress powers, as of, I think, last year, 35% of the entire internet and 66% of all content management systems, which is absolutely insane amount of usage. Um, and I guess, you know, the reason for that is it's highly extensible and allows for customization. So um, more on the topic of my talk. Uh, we need to find a work out first of all what what is a silo. Um, Google definition tells us it's a, a tall tower or pit on a farm used to store grain. Um, an underground chamber which a guided missile is kept ready for firing. I don't think uh, that's probably not as relevant here. Um, to isolate one system process department from others. So. Uh, Oh, sorry, I actually meant what's a silo structure, not, not a silo. We need to talk about what's a silo structure. So taking from what a silo is, you know, that's kind of how silo structures were, were I guess, uh, thought of on, on how to apply that to a website. I mean, it's just a way of really just organizing content physically or, or virtually. So physically by um, physically changing the link of, of that page or content um, and trying to break it up into different topics and, and try and make it easy to understand. Um, so what does this look like? Um, it can look like a very flat structure um, where your site is only one topic and all of the pages underneath that. Or you can have a very deep silo structure like the second image there on, on the bottom where it goes down several different silos and those silos have silos and those silos have silos. So it can get pretty complex. Um, and what that looks like in, in for a URL is, you know, you could have um, topic one and then all the pages within that, topic two, all the pages within that, topic three and all the pages within that. So that's three different silos there. Um, or you can get a bit more complex um, and have topic, subtopic, and then the page and then all the pages and different subtopics and it can get very confusing very quickly. Um, so I guess a good way to visualize that, thanks to Sitebulb for this graph. Um, I think this is a, a cool, um, it looks pretty uh, cool to look at um, from initial glance, but essentially all it is, is I guess this is a nice looking silo where you've got lots of different subtopics um, and pages under that. And really when applying this to WordPress and any website in general, you know, it's really down to planning um, as I think it's, you know, it could be 90% planning and 10% executing. Um, so with that in mind, um, let's work out, I guess, let's look at some of the ways that WordPress handles um, links, because then once we know that how WordPress handles links, then we can apply that to our planning. Um, without kind of knowing how WordPress and the different options are available, um, then let's, uh, you know, it's difficult to plan. So um, WordPress content handling post types. So in WordPress, uh, basically, everything is a post. Um, and I've got a nice picture of a post there. That's a PVC post for anyone anyone wondering. Um, so what do I mean by everything is a post? Well, quite literally, everything is a blog post. Um, so if we've got um, a page in WordPress, that's also a post. Um, Taxonomies are a little bit different, even though they do extend off the post a uh, post type. Um, but yeah, if you if you had, um, we'll get into a bit more um, more about what the different types of posts are. Um, but I think revisions, attachments, and everything else is extended off a post. Why is my screen 
Why is it not working? Change slides, please. Is that updating for you? All right. There we go. No, it's not. WordPress okay. content handling. Oh, yeah, got yeah. It yeah, all good. So um, if we look in the Post top types. one there, um, we can see that in the URL of the admin, it says post type equals page. So even a page in WordPress is a post. Um, and that's really important, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then you can see taxonomies there in the second picture. I don't know if you can read that. Hopefully you can. Um, it says taxonomy equals location. So every, there's, everything's based off a taxonomy, um, and WordPress kind of just inherits that um, for each of each taxonomy you have. And you can see that that taxonomy is applied to that post type, which the post type there is called bar, um, which was from a, a demo site I made a, I made uh, the other day. So then we've also got custom post types. So that 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 was a more default WordPress behavior. Even even WordPress core itself uses post types to make pages, um, and. WordPress, uh, I don't know which version of WordPress, uh, maybe uh, 10 years ago at least, I think, they um, created the ability to make custom post types. And this is when plugins, maybe it was a bit more than 10 years ago, since WordPress is only 15 years old, it was a bit more. Um, then, yeah, they made the ability to create custom post types. Um, so essentially what that lets you do is use WordPress's interface in the back end to create your own post type. So on the left-hand side, you've got pages. You could make one called products. Um, you could make one called events or, or things like that. And um, usually, you know, it's for advanced coders and developers who are baking it into a plugin they've made or um, a theme someone's built, even though you're not really meant to have functionality in a theme, but people do it anyway. Um, so for and a good a good example of that is WooCommerce. So if you go if you install WooCommerce, which is uh, I think um, a popular commerce plugin that everyone should know, um, it says post type equals product. So they've made their own post type called product, and they've baked that into their plugin. And by installing that plugin, you get access to that extra post type, and it shows up on the left hand sidebar. Um, and as it says, they you know traditionally baked into um, complex plugins or used on expensive websites. And um, what I mean by that is expensive, as in big development team who code custom plugins just for them. And it's not a uh, there we go WP version three. That's when custom post types were released. Um, and uh, you know since I guess maybe five years ago when theme builders really started coming into play, um, it was really easy to create post types because sure, you could have made the post type before that very easily and store the data, but it was difficult to display that data. And, and you'd have to make a PHP template to just for that post type that you've created. Um, and that's why it was, a I guess, a little bit of a roadblock for that. Um, and uh, as it says there, you know, you can do it too, and it won't look like a site from the 90s, like uh, on the right-hand side there, <laughs> um, which uh, uh, is a still up today. And you can go to that link. The link's there, toastytech.com forward slash evil. So with uh, that in mind, we can, I guess, take from that that WordPress and the content in WordPress and how Word, WordPress manages content is within three, three I guess, general categories. Um, the first is post types, and which we've just spoken about. The second is taxonomies. And you would have seen taxonomies when you go into WordPress posts, and then it says categories, and it says tags. That's, that's a taxonomy. Um, so when, when, you could, when they uh, created, created hooks for creating post types, they also created hooks for making taxonomies and custom taxonomies. Um, and then the third is fields. So um, having, as uh, Sejo just said, ACF for the win, um, advanced custom fields is a good plugin where you can add your own fields um, and extend beyond just the um, title, 
the featured image and the body text. Um, so you can add uh, other things like that. So some examples of that is for post types. You know, you can have post, page, product, article, event, uh, listing. So it could be like you know um, a listing of uh, like a marketplace listing. Um, Food, I'm just making them up now. Food, coffee, uh, pizza, team members, um, which is what we're using, which I created that on the new Prosperity site. We've got team members. Um, High-rise building. Um, so there's uh, many different options. You know, you can, you can literally create anything that you want and anything that suits the brief of the site. Um, uh, on the, oh, I'll get to that actually in a second. I'll use that example in a second. So then we've got taxonomies. So traditionally, the taxonomies built in are category and tags. Pages don't really have taxonomies, um, even though that um, you can create them. Um, but there's no real use for it, um, mainly because pages are often each unique, um, like each page is unique, where a post kind of the content's different, but the pages are the, the content. The posts are the same, and they use the same template. Um, so, some examples of that is when you install WooCommerce, they give you a product category, product tag. Um, if you made an article post type, you can have article type, food type, coffee machine. So this, this is this is where you start getting into the SEO value of these taxonomies. Um, so you can have a, a blend of coffee, and then have a taxonomy as, as a post type, a blend of coffee as a post type, and then have coffee machine as a taxonomy. So then you can have the taxonomy called um, X machine for um, this specific blend of coffee. And that's where you start getting like different search terms in for those sort of things. Um, pizza, you can have toppings. So you could have like pepperoni, pepperoni pizza or things like that. Um, team member, you can have roll and then um, high-rise building, you can have location. Then you start getting into fields. Um, so fields could be title, description, short description, image. Then you can start adding your own custom ones, gallery, price, construction date, um, and as many as you want um, to display that on, on, the, on the site. So the importance of these three things and why I've shown this is, next slide, please, there we go. So the way I like to understand this structure and, and build this in my site, you know, you might do this a little bit differently, but that's okay. So the way I like to do it is a post type is usually an individual item that someone might search for. So it could be a specific um, blog post, it could be an article, it could be a product. Um, that's a very general generalized um, description, but it, I think it applies to all post types. Um, and then a taxonomy is usually a group of items or things related to that item that someone might, that someone might search for. So um, we'll use the high-rise building example for that. So you could have um, the crown, um, the new crown building that they're building in Sydney. And then you can have um, buildings in Sydney as the location. Um, and then if someone searches for buildings in Sydney, you show them the, the category page, and then you've got all the buildings in Sydney. So it's a really awesome way to automate that essentially and, and have pages built um, and the content dynamically updated, which is awesome. Then you've got fields. So fields, I guess it's similar to a taxonomy. You know, you can filter on a site. Let's say if you had all high-rise buildings, you can still use fields for filtering and show just the high-rise buildings within this price range, or for example, all the products within these price ranges. But if you install WooCommerce, you know price is not a um, is not a taxonomy, but it's a field on the on the page. But you can still use that for filtering. Um, so, next slide. Um, so, the way WordPress does this is it creates a page for a post type. The first one, it creates a page. Um, on your site, just about that specific item, um, going off what I said before. The group of items creates a page on your site about the collection of items, um, and fields does not create a page on your site. So it can be used as content on that page or on that taxonomy. Um, 
you can have custom fields on both, but it's generally not something that someone would search for um, specifically unless they, it was a, a, key, a, a specific keyword that they're ranking for that content already. So when thinking about this and how, how, I'm, how I'm planning out my structure, um, the, I guess you need to decide, am I going to use a taxonomy or as a, am I going to use a field? And um, really, you just need to get in the mind of the user on how they search and what they're typing in to understand which one you're going to use and really plan that out properly. Um, a note there as well on the left-hand side here, um, post types, they also have the option to create an archive page if you don't need to create multiple taxonomies. And what I mean by that is um, if, if you have a blog, and oh, let's use a different example. If you have, I'll use the example that we did on the prosperity site. So we created a, I created a post type called SEO services. Um, since we only do SEO services, not services in general. And then I didn't create any taxonomies for that, but I still wanted to show a page with all the services on it, or the SEO services on it. So what I did was I just enabled the archive page for that post type, which I'll show you how to do um, later in this presentation. If I, if, I was, if I created a more generalized post type called services, and then I had SEO services, digital marketing services, um, PPC services, you know, things like that, then I would probably need a taxonomy because it's, uh, it needs to be organized deeper in a silo where um, enabling just the archive on a post type, it's uh, basically a flat silo. Um, so it's, it's a good way to do that. Um, so you've really got to think about how to organize, the, organize your data and how you're going to even set up your data before you even get to building the links, uh, building the URL structures. OK, so um, when looking at, so now that we've got that out of the way and we know how WordPress handles and manages the content, next we need to look at how does WordPress handle the URLs, because that's also important when deciding how to set up your site and your site structure. So WordPress has five built-in methods for handling URLs. Um, that's date-based. Um, so you could have the year, the month, and then the post name. Um, you, then you've got category-based. And that's um, like, let's say, use the example of the SEO services page, um, SEO services post type. So let's say we just had general services. And we wanted the link to be mysite.com forward slash SEO service forward slash um, link building, for example. Then I would use category based because it would put that in the link. You can have name based, so basically nothing. You just have mysite.com forward slash link building for the same example. Um, you can have ID based, so using the actual post ID, because every time you create a post, and I think um, if I go back to my slide before, there we go. Um, if oh, That's for the group of posts. But if, if I went into that specific page, oh, there we go, tag ID, you can see there in the second one, tag ID equals four. Um, so that's that's the essentially the post ID. Go back. Um, so you can put that in the URL if you want. Um, and that can be either a query string, so it can, um, I'm not sure exactly how it works. I think it's post ID equals whatever the number is. Um, I'm not sure what they put um, in there. Or you can have a pretty permalink or a pretty, pretty ID based link where it's just forward slash um, ID of four. So it would just be forward slash four. And then the fifth one is any combination of all of the above. So. Um, it basically lets you build your own slugs and how you want your post slugs to be. So you could put year, and then you can put category, and then you can put ID, and then you can put the name. <laughs> it's pretty customizable, and uh, um, that's, I guess, one of the reasons why WordPress is popular, because it lets you create anything. Um, so a uh, big warning. Um, for everyone who's watching at home. Um, 
if you have an existing site and you change the settings on the next page, which I'm about to show you, it will probably impact your SEO unless you know what you're doing and you put a link or you put a redirect. Um, but the main reason why I've got this warning, because everyone knows, if, or most people know, if you change a page, you need to redirect it um, from the old link to the new link. But the reason why I'm putting this big warning is because when you change the settings in the permalink page, which I'm about to show you, it affects all of your content, your whole site, because it, it's not changing the end slug. It's not changing the name of the page. It's changing the things between your domain name, so mysite.com, and the name of the page. And that is really uh, what this next page controls. And it's a lot more difficult to set up a redirect for that, mainly because you need, usually need to use regular expression, um, regex, when you're doing a, a redirect from this type of thing. Um, and uh, it's very complex if you've got a lot of traffic. Um, so what I recommend doing is checking each page individually, putting the link in, in, into Google, seeing, first of all, is that link indexed, putting it in Search Console, and making sure that um, if it's getting clicks and impressions, and that's one you've got to flag and make sure that you've uh, redirected properly and test, um, and uh, proceed with caution before you um, change your permalink settings as it can really um, affect your site. And just for the, um, I guess, a basic example of that, just for the people at home who have I guess, not too familiar with how that works, um, if you have a link to your page um, and all of the SEO value is on that page, all of the Google has indexed that page specifically, if any part of that link changes, then it's essentially moving houses to a new address. And um, without telling people that you've got going to this new address, then it a, it's a, can be a big problem. Um, so moving on. Um, so this is the permalinks settings page, permalink settings page. And you can get to this by going settings and then in, in your WordPress dashboard with admin privileges, you can go to settings, permalinks. And uh, these are the five different options that I mentioned above. Um, you'll notice there's not actually five there, there's six there. But um, I merged a few of them together. So day and name and month and name is both, both date. Um, and then plain is the query string. Um, numeric is um, the, the, the ID, the pretty version of the ID. Um, and then post name is just simple post name with nothing in between, between your domain name and your page. And then custom structure is where it gets complex and you can um, get creative as well. Um, and they've got this nice little tags, um, dynamic tags thing that you can put in. So in this bar here on the on this uh, um, field here, you can put text and you can, so it's set and you can put dynamic, um, um, dynamic uh, data there. So you can put year, month, day, post name, second if you want, post ID, category, author as well. Um, that's one I didn't mention on the previous slide, but I, that's, I'd, I'd say is just category, similar to category. Um, so these are the settings I'm talking about here where if you change something, that's going to change all of your posts on your whole site. And that's why you've got to be really careful without changing it. For a new site, go ahead, play with them, experiment. Um, and I'd recommend if you did need to change these, if you did want to change your, how your site structure is set up, do it on a staging server, guys, first. You know, you don't you don't want to risk it. Um, because it, you know, if if you don't fix it, it completely it can, it can completely tank a whole site. Um so moving on, I've just got, I guess, um, a few different examples of um, options to use here just to give people ideas on, on how to plan their structure. So the first one here is, um, I guess, for a simple business site, you know, you've, it assumes you've got pages or um, other, other sections of your site set up or other post types of your site set up um, because these settings don't control settings for custom post types, it's only for WordPress posts. I should note that, that's important to note. Um, so I guess this is a, an example that I've thought of for someone who's got pages on your site. So you might have like 
um, service pages, you might have um, events or something else set up. So I like going for a forward slash article and then post name, keeps it simple um, and it's uh, easy to understand. Um, then we've got down the bottom, which I didn't mention, this is, uh, this is for optional settings, I guess. This is for the categories and the taxonomies. So um, I like changing the category base. In Newton, the, the default WordPress one is category. I like changing it to topics. I think it's a bit nicer, a bit easier to understand. But again, you know, it's whatever you, whatever you want your site to be, you can get creative with it. Um, the next one is, I guess, for a simple blog. So this assumes that there's no pages on your site. There's no other content on your site. There's no other silo of, uh, of things on your site. Um, your site is first and foremost a blog um, or in a, a news site. So what I recommend here is just having the post name after your domain, so mysite.com forward slash my post. Um, keeps it simple um, and you know it doesn't doesn't uh, you don't really need to go into a silo there. If you want, you can put you can put a silo by having um, forward slash articles as well, but it's up to you. Um, but keeping it this way is it, it brings it as close as possible to the root domain. Um, and then also you can have topics as as your category base. Um, again, you know that can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, let's say you had a bit more of a complex blog and um, you knew what you were doing a little bit more. Um, maybe you'd like to dynamically use a category in your post name. So to do that, you go mysite.com forward slash and um, you put category. Um, and you know again, if you don't, if you're not sure of the syntax for that. You can press the blue buttons down the bottom and they insert it in. Um, and you can make sure you put the slashes between things as well. Oops. Um, then um, again, topics, you know, that can be whatever you want. Now let's say you had a complex news site and you wanted to have year, and then you have month, and then you have category, and then you have your post name. You know, it can get very complex. Um, and if you remember from the first slide where I said, you know, link preservation. What I mean by that is if if you're doing things like this and putting dates in your in your post types, you have to be aware that maybe you could be open to content to de content decay a little bit quicker. Um, if you if you wanted to update that article, then the URL is going to be from three years ago still. So then you need to have a redirect and change the slug. Um, so it can get it can get pretty confusing. Um, if you did have this and um, it automatically takes the date and someone didn't really know the consequences of going in and changing the date of a post in the back end and they update it, then it doesn't add a redirect. You know, you've got to make sure you've added, added a redirect um, automatically, uh, sorry, manually. Um, there are ways to do it automatically, but um, it's still something to be um, uh, uh, considerate of. Um, a lot of news site news sites used to use this method, um, but I think a lot of them are changing now to um, the previous one where you had the the category um, and then the post name, and maybe they'll add an ID at the end to to have a unique key. Um, so let's say you had an e-commerce site. Um, this is this this is the um, silo I'm using for one of my e-commerce sites that I recently set up. Um, normally you would have, um, like by, by doing it this way, so what I've done just first of all is I've put forward slash learn, forward slash article for the blog, and then I've put the post name. And then the category bases, I've put forward slash learn, forward slash topics, or forward slash learn, or forward slash categories, or whatever you want it to be. And then the tags are the same, forward slash learn, forward slash tags. And the reason I do this is because when you have a lot of other types of content, like products, um, you might have events as well. A lot of e-commerce sites have events. They're going down their own silos. So you have three specific silos, one for events, one for um, a shop, and then one for the blog there. I guess this is kind of similar to having um, a blog dot subdomain by having the blog completely separate. But um, you know, it's not good to do a blog domain, so I recommend doing something like this. And you know, learn can be whatever you want. You could call it forward slash blog if you want. Um, but this was a more of a, I wanted this to be more of educational content. 
Um, so I went for slot forward slash learn. So that can be whatever you want. Um, again, you know, it's up to you. But by adding that learn and putting it in the tags and the categories as well, that's putting it onto its own silo um, and then having silos within that for the categories and the, the actual articles themselves. Um, so, all right, so um, when you install a plugin like WooCommerce, um, what they do is they uh, put their own settings into this permalinks page, the same permalinks page. Um, so you get pretty much the same thing, but for products. So you can have product permalinks. You can choose how you want your products to show up. I normally like just going for forward slash product. Um, and then for categories, you can put range or um, range slash tag or like range or for the product, you can go range slash um, product. It's up to you. Um, but keeping it simple and as uh, the least amount of extra forward slashes or, forward or links uh, silos here is, I think, better. And it keeps it a bit cleaner. Um, so as I said, you know, WooCommerce inserts this directly into the WordPress settings page, so you don't need to go into any other settings. Um, and it's uh, really easy to manage. Now, you, you might ask, what happens if I've got categories set up and my, my product belongs into multiple categories? And this is not just for products. This is also for blogs as well. Um, well, thanks to SEO plugins, there's a, they've solved it because normally before it would just take the first one um, in the list. Um, I don't know whether that's alphabetical or the lowest ID or whatever. I'm not sure. But um, SEO plugins like SEO Press and Yoast, you can set the primary category. So that's what the slug will use. Um, in, so it could be what I mean by that is if you have, um, for a blog post, if you have um, forward slash my site, forward slash um, SEO, forward slash link building, and then um, you wanted to have, uh, you had multiple categories. So you also have one called search engine optimization or something like that. Um, then you can make sure it's set to S forward slash SEO is that, and that will, that's what it will use in the link. Um, and it does it for um, categories as well. And Yoast, I think most SEO plugins do this. Yoast has the option as well. Um, I like using SEO press, but that's just me. Um, so just to sum up that part, um, key takeaways from URL structure examples. So by using categories and slugs, we significantly change the silo so that the category is at the top of the tree and the post is at the very bottom of the tree. Um, I think, um, you know, it, it's uh, the closer you can get your post to the um, root of your site, the better. Um, it's a bit, just a bit neater. Um, you could have an item in multiple categories and your favorite SEO plugin will give you the option to set it as primary. Um, by using dates, we open up the potential for content decay and risk having to add a redirect if the article is updated. Um, while you lose the potential to have keywords in a slug when not using a category, you can separate posts from categories into separate silos, which is much flatter and future-proof. So um, I guess a good strategy from here is to link back to the categories and, and post into the content. So you know what, what we're trying to avoid is having too deep of a silo. Um, and the example I've got on the next page is, you know, you don't want it to be too flat and, and have your, your silo too condensed into one topic. You want to kind of organize it a little bit, but you don't want to go too deep either um, and have the have the um, the page as far down the tree as possible. So you want it, you want it to be kind of in between these two graphs that I've got here. Um, and that's uh, that's good for um, that's good for having like a, a physical link structure. Remember, you can always virtually get around this by um, putting links and having a good interlinking structure. Um, if you do have it too deep or or not deep enough, um, sorry, if you do have it too deep or um, just a normal silo. Um, so you know, there's uh, I guess it's just up to you. You don't want to go too deep. Is I think my um, advice here. All right, so moving on to the second part of the presentation, um, let me just see through the comments. 
Um, has anyone asked any questions, or are we doing that at the end? We, we can do that at the end, mate. Uh, All right, do it yeah, at the end. Might do it at the end. <laughs> no worries. There's not many slides. I think there's only like five or six slides left, so we're almost there. Um, I know it's a bit of a long presentation, but I think it's good to go to deep dive occasionally. 100%. It's fantastic so far, mate. All righty. So um, this is a little bit high level as well. It's, it's not it's not high level, but it's not super deep. Um, I think it's just, just so everyone could um, understand. And we'll go back to that. There we go. So custom post types. Um, as I said before, WordPress has a function that allows you to register your own post types and taxonomies. Um, when you install a plugin like WooCommerce or Events Calendar, they use this function to register the post type. And uh, you can code your own or use a plugin to make your own post types. Um, these were the only two limitations I thought of. Um, maybe if uh, us or Will is uh, commenting there, if, uh, if anyone knows of more limitations, then uh, let me know. Um, and the first one's not really a limitation because there is ways around it, but it's the default behavior and it's uh, very difficult to um, fix if, uh, if you're not sure what you're doing. Um, so by default, when you have your own custom post type, um, the default behavior is to add mysite.com forward slash, I'd use the example of service, forward slash service, and then the page name my service. So that's the default behavior. But if you'd like your post type to be, I guess, more in line with a page on your site, you don't really want to have forward slash service. You know, you just want to have um, my mysite.com forward slash my service, my page, whatever you want, my event. Um, and the when you have a post type, um, sure, you know, there's plugins to do it, which I'll show you on the next screen. But the limitation was always that you need to make a PHP template for your CPT. And that was normally for advanced coders only. Um, however, uh, Daniel, uh, here's my plug for Beaver Builder, as you mentioned at the start of the presentation. Um, so page builders are helping with this because over the last maybe five years or so, they've changed from just um, being able to construct a page and the content within and the body, you know, not, not touching the header, not touching the footer. And they've changed from a theme build from that to becoming a theme builder. So what that lets you do now is you can create headers, you can create footers, get dynamic layouts for your post. So you can create one layout for your blog post or one layout for your SEO service page and send that to that specific post type. And then every anytime someone goes into the back end, you can have content editors, you can have um, um, uh, editors or writers or whoever, or admin staff going into the back end of your site, they can go and add a new post and it automatically uses your layout. They don't need to go into the page builder or into the PHP template um, file to make any changes. You know, it's really, it's all done from the front end. Um, and you can also connect your custom fields to ACF um, or, or whatever other custom field plugin you're using. Um, and this is in replacement of a PHP template file. So there's a PHP template file for post, there's a PHP template file for page, um, and this also works for posts. You can override your posts. It's not just custom fields. So Beaver Builder was the first theme, was the first um, page builder to release a theme builder, I think, five years ago. Um, soon after that, Elementor, which is another popular one, um, followed suit. And then more recently, I mean, more recently by like last year, Divi released one, but um, if you're using Divi on your site, you probably um, should hide in shame. Um, so I just put this um, as an example. Um, so um, Beaver Builder lets you create 404 pages, search pages, archive pages, um, all of all of these page builders, not just Beaver Thema. Um, uh, footers, headers, theme parts, um, and it's uh, it's really handy, really easy. And this was kind of the missing link between having custom fields before, having custom post types before, you know. That's why it was really expensive before, before because you needed a whole developer themed business type or a freelancer um, who knows what they're doing. But now, you know, it's very easy. Anyone can do it. 
um, and there's just another screen. Um, you know, field connections, theme parts, and you can drag. So, like the way this works, it's really good. You can drag in a text field and then connect it to your site title or your archive page or, or your category page. So, if you have a blog post, you can say this is posted in these categories and, and things like that. So, it's this is posted in by that author. So, it's really good. Um, all right, popular, but it's definitely one of the easiest to use, especially for beginners. Um, it kind of really helps you get your head around how you can create post types and taxonomies. Um, it also does custom fields, um, but I don't actually use it for custom fields. I, um, I use ACF for custom fields because I think it's a bit more powerful. But if you wanted an all-in-one, this is great. Um, and so an example of this, um, you can create you know, SEO service or, or whatever, whatever we've been talking about in all the last slides. What's cool is you can also extend existing post types and taxonomies. So I've extended, um, for example, I've extended WooCommerce products, and I've created a brand's taxonomy. So in, like, like when you make a new product, you go and tick the category, tick the tag. You can tick which brand it's in as well and create brand pages. It's, uh, it's really cool. Um, and another plugin to use instead of pods is CPTUI, which is a popular one, um, maybe one of the more popular ones. Um, or you can code it into a plugin, your own plugin, or put it in your functions PHP file. Um, I'm not a fan of putting things in functions PHP. I like creating a plugin just so I know what each function does, and you can put it in um, must use plugins if you need. Um, and the WordPress Codex framework has all of the um, information on how to do that. The cool thing about CPT UI over pods is um, what you can do is export the custom post type after you've made it and then turn it into a plugin and to put it into the theme. So it removes the ability for users to go and change it in the future once you're happy with it. So what I like to do, um, well, I started using pods when I first started teaching myself how to do this. And now I, now I use CPT UI. And what I do is I just click one button to export it, um, which pods doesn't do, only CPT UI does. And then I add a plugin header to it, and I put it in my must-use folder in plugins folder in WordPress. So it's out of the way. Um, no one can touch it. No one can change it. No one can change my silo or affect anything. Um, so it's really easy to add a pod. Um, what you do is you just open up pods and activate it, add new pod, and then choose if you want to create new or existing. It brings up an interface, and you can choose um, um, the name of your pod, it tells you you need to enter a plural and a singular version of it. Um, or if you're extending your existing post or taxonomy, it's um, really good for that too. Um, so super easy to do. Um, and uh, I think that's uh, one of the reasons why you guys should be doing it more. Um, next is um, editing URLs. So as I said before, the permalinks page in WordPress only controls your um, blog posts and blog categories and WooCommerce if you're install if you've installed WooCommerce. If you're making your own post types, you need to do that in the post type PHP file or in pods through a drag and drop interface. And this is really the reason why I like pods the most because it's super easy to use. It's laid out nicely, and you can really get your head around what the different options are for making a custom post type. And what I mean by that is. Remember how before I said if you want to enable an archive page because you've only got one simple flat silo, all you've got to tick is, um, I know it's probably a little bit hard to read. Well, what, I accidentally scrolled. Oops. Thank you, Apple Magic Mouse. Um, so um, might be a little bit hard to read. You might have to go and, and see it um, in my slides after or just go to the pods um, plugin page. Um, it's free. It's a free plugin on WordPress. Um, so to enable the archive page, all you have to do is tick the archive button, and then it creates an archive page. Um, and um, another example is if you wanted to have um, this um, as a hierarchical, so you wanted to have like sub pages, you can enable that by turning that on. Um, now, this is probably in the most, I guess, one of the most important ones. You've got rewrites. So this is this is where it says we're going to use the base that you've selected in your permalinks page, or we're going to use the one you suggest here. 
So more often than not, you want to disable that and just use the one that um, you're selecting here. Because if you don't, and you don't use the base WordPress one either, what it does is it goes CPT-event or CPT-property or CPT-venue, like the example I've got there. So you want to have that nice looking and you want to change that to um, something that's a bit easier to understand for the user. Um, so adding your custom rewrite slug in there. Um, and then, sorry, rewrite with front is the one that I mentioned where it inherits it from the permalinks page. Um, so more often than not, you just want to untick that. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other settings there and controls for exactly how you want it to be laid out. Um, and I just suggest going through and having a, having a dig. I think there's lots of YouTube videos on how to set up your post types. Um, similar enough, if you set up a category, um, the only thing that you need to do to link it to your post type is after you've created your category or your brands, you go down into advanced options, scroll to the bottom and choose which post type you want that link to. And then it shows up in the left-hand side of um, like products. It shows up as brands. And you don't have to do any work. It's really good. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, ACF, great plugin. You can that's, that's where you get control of your fields. Um, really easy to use. Um, made by, I think, Elliot's an Aussie guy. I've seen him at a few meetups, um, a few events and word camps. Um, and that's where you put your data that probably someone wouldn't search for. Um, specifically, or a search for a group of them, um, you know, event dates, pricing, um, serial numbers, addresses, and things like that. Um, so it's it's really extensible, um, really good to use. And so that is everything. I hope uh, I hope I have uh, explained that. <laughs> that was great. Man. Thanks, man. That was awesome. <laughs> That was really, really awesome. Just hit the 50 minute mark <laughs> as soon as I went to the Q&A. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, a lot of content really, really to go awesome. through. I'm sure um, we got uh, some really, really great uh, questions. A little bit brain overload maybe now. Um, but yeah. No, it's awesome. There's a couple of um, there's a couple of plugins in there that I've never used or even seen before. So. Um, yeah, it'd just be good to be able to like get in there and have a bit of a play around. Um, Sardo, should we just um, yeah, jump straight into sure. questions? Hit me. <sighs> yeah, I'll start off with I'll start off with you because you you had the first yeah, question. So the first I think. one was basically um, like you showed uh, like a image crawl map. I think you said it was from Sightbulb. Do you know what uh, site that yeah. was? Where I got that image? Yeah. Do you know which site that was? Oh, no, I have no idea. Is... It, I don't know how good did it look. <laughs> <laughs> that looks too perfect. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just it again. <laughs> this one, right? I think it was like towards the very oh, start. There we go. So yeah, that one, that one, yeah. Look how, look how crazy like, that looks, yeah. In all my years, like, you know, yeah. to find something like that in production is close to impossible like <laughs> like you could probably like set up things that way that wouldn't like you know rank for anything and stuff like that but like if this is a site that is ranking well hats off to them yeah. <laughs> i think uh it was one of their stock photos of when they were promoting and i just took it from their site all uh, so, right uh, i think i've seen maybe one maybe, dictionary maybe kind of exists. site maybe it doesn't exist <laughs> like, this is I've a window one, which was like a dictionary or something but yeah Mm. Like, hard to see something like that. Yeah. Imagine, so like, you're, you're doing your first crawl again. and you see a site like that. You're like, oh, my you're God. Like, How's that job <laughs> you can just, uh... <laughs> No need to Who do this. Who doing this site? Yeah, yeah, just make sure there's, like, nice breadcrumbs putting it all together. <laughs> all right. Well, um, we'll jump into um, asked by Peter Machinkovich. How do you balance client requirements versus what is good for SEO in designing an infinite information architecture? Where's the uh, question on the screen? The screen is... You can jump into the private the, chat kind of window there. Oh, there we go. Which one is it? I'm just going to find it. Uh, it should be the second one on the... Oh, there we go. All right. Um, so, good question. There we go. Here it um, is. Normally, I just tell the clients what to do and they listen. <laughs> um, look, no, you know, 
I think one of the, I guess, considerations as well is if the site has been running for a few years and the silo structure is bad, is it worth changing? Um, probably not, you know. Um, so um, unless, you know, unless it's not getting much traffic, then maybe, but yeah. Um, just kind of working with the client, um, coming up with, with the best way. But usually for me, most clients are happy to listen to recommendations um, for a good information architecture. Yeah. The way that um, the way that we kind of manage it over over on our end is like, you know, is it is it actually a good time, for example, like right now, um, I'm still in the process of managing 10, hopefully nine as of this week, site migrations. Yes, it is killing me. Um, but wait, Brutal. a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the thinking um, with some of the clients that are, you know, doing like, you know, you know huge um, whole site migrations or even like partially like changing their URL structures. At the moment, for a lot of the e-commerce ones, it's in the lead up to Black Friday, to um, Cyber Monday, or you know, like Christmas and things like that. So, yeah. a lot of the time, it's like you know, is this the best time um, to change up um, your URL structure? Have a look at your organic traffic. Have a look at the keywords. Have a look at the backlinks associated to that URL. If you're doing a three hundred one redirect and changing the URL structure, um, it will have some mm -hmm. impact on um, the SEO. Whether yeah. whether it be like um, you know, we'll lose some um, awkward. So maybe it's just a little bit of like um, classic SEO answer. It depends. Like think about the time. Have a look at the organic traffic. Have a look at the keywords and the backlinks. Yeah, I think it's very important. You know, especially when you're changing the permalinks. As I said earlier in my presentation, mm. changing the permalinks affects all posts, or all, all, all your, your entire content silo changes. So you need to be really careful in doing it and, um, you know, deciding is it worth doing at all or do we just, yeah. is it better to just leave it? Um, so that's something that I guess you need to work out. Um, what is the impact of doing this? How quickly can we recover? Um, and as you said, you know, doing it into the lead up of a big sale like Black Friday is probably not a good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much a conversation that I've been having for the last couple of weeks. All right, um, on to the next question. Again, it's from Peter Machinkovich. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Peter is um, a phenomenal SEO here based in Melbourne. Um, so, you know, that's why the questions are um, pretty high quality. Um, so he asks, what are the limitations of WordPress in building out a silo structure? I don't think there's many. Um, you know, as I, as I showed on the permalinks page, you can pretty much create anything you want. Um, I guess probably one of the ones that I didn't cover here was when we were building the prosperity site, all of the, all of the, uh, I wanted to use a nice, um, uh, post type for SEO services, but the problem was all of the URLs are pages before. So we had like SEO Sydney, whatever. Um, so as I said, in, in one of the limitations of setting up a custom post type is you can't easily, or the WordPress default behavior is to have forward slash services forward slash my page. Um, I think about after three days of Googling and trying different bits of code, I came up with a rewrite rule that's compatible with custom post types and in WordPress so that it this custom post type acted like a page um, from a URL point of view, but it was an SEO, SEO service post type um, so that we could make use of the nice layout from, um, from Beaver Thema and have, have all the SEO services using a similar layout um, just to make things easier and to, to make creating new content easier. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, there's always going to be some limitation and some ro roadblocks, but just from that example that I just gave, you know, the default behavior is not to have um, uh, your, your page immediately after your domain. But, you know, because WordPress is so extensible, I was able to overcome that. Um, it ended up being like five lines of code, but it was <laughs> a lot of trial and error to get it right. And like, and then I had an, and then I found, I had to create more code so that, 
when you add an SEO service in the, in the back end, if there's a page that already exists with that slug, it doesn't, um, it uses WordPress's default um, uh, checker so that there's no two pages with the same name. So what it does is if you make a new page in WordPress with the same name, it adds a dash two at the end. So this mm -hmm. will do the same thing. Yeah, so, nice. yeah. I don't um, think there's don't many limitations, um, but yeah. <laughs> don't suppose you've got a, um, a GitHub uh, account that you've uh, shared that little tip with? You know, I don't even have one for my own personal use, and I've uh, I've just got them PHP files in my uh, in my Google Drive. I really need to actually. I've got them in my Apple Notes as well, so so I need to organize <laughs> that and pull it out. <laughs> nice. The Peter will more than likely really want to know. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Andrew, I'll let you take the next two, Daniel's and yourself. Sure. Um, your questions. I think my yeah, I think mine. He just answered it right now, so like there's no need to go through that. So we'll go with Daniel's. Mm -hmm. So are there any downsides to replacing tags or category taxonomies created by WordPress or WooCommerce with your own uh, page? I'm guessing uh, he meant your own type. Um, so instead of having a category page, you just use a default WordPress page, I understand. Yeah, so I'm guessing he talks about replacing like tag or topic with something like uh, tag or category with something like topics. Um, I think that I'm not sure exactly what the question means, but um, I'll answer both just to cover both bases. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're replacing a tag or category taxonomy with just your own like page in WordPress, like a page as in you go into pages and create a page, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You just gotta, you just gotta think about where does that sit in, in your silo? How does that sit into your, into your um, tree map? And um, is it nice to look at in a nice site bulb graph? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter what, what the URL of your page is, um, as long as you're linking to it internally and externally, and um, then it's, uh, and people can find it, then it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Hmm. Um, awesome. I think, I hope that answers the question. Um, but if, if you, if it was, a, if it was um, your interpretation, Sergio, then um, topics instead of like, tag or category, you know, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter. It's just up to personal preference, I think. Cool. Yeah, Thanks. Awesome. Uh, so the next one, uh, you've already answered Is... that, so we'll jump to, like, your question, Nick, you can go for it. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> I, did a, I added my own little question in there, so sorry, there is, there's no um, flash up on the screen. Um, but I, I just want to ask you a question, like how do you tackle RSS feeds that don't work when you try and import them in? Um, I've got an RSS feed that um, just for whatever reason just didn't import and I went in um, and usually like there's like a little blank space like after like the closing of the PHP tag um, that mm -hmm. like, you know, you just delete it and it usually like, it's like, yeah, cool, like I'll validate now. Um, when in the... Um, and um, just made sure that that was closed off, but it still didn't work. And I'm just like, great. Um, so is, do you have any like tips or anything like that to kind of like troubleshoot things like that? Um, so just so I understand, you're importing an RSS feed of content from a different site? Yeah, it's a blog. Site, mm. and, and you want to import the content from another blog into your site? Correct. Um, do you have admin access to the blog that you're taking? Um, I think so. I think so. I wouldn't, I I wouldn't use an RSS feed then. Um, I would just go in and export. Like WordPress has an export import function directly built in. Um, so you can download, a, I think it's a JSON file of all the data, mm -hmm. um, and then um, upload that directly into your new site. It keeps all the custom fields, um, meta titles, everything. Um, there's an, if, if you don't want to use the default WordPress one, because it doesn't really give you that many extra options, mm -hmm. um, then um, there's a plugin called WP All Import and a sister plugin WP All Export. 
and that's really good for controlling exactly what you want to bring in from the old site and export from the old site and import into the new site. So I'll, I'll do yeah, it that, that way. Yeah, a good way to manage it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, essentially, it's essentially like um, across like um, US, um, UK and um, AU. So essentially it's, it's the same kind of thing, um, but yeah. it's just like being split out with HF Lang. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, why isn't this working? Yeah, RSS feeds, you know, sometimes they, they're not the most reliable. So I, I would do a, um, yeah, if, and like even that WP all import one, um, you have the option of using, uh, of downloading and importing the images from the old one. Or you can just say, I want to use the link of the image. So you can import that into the media library of the site you're importing into. Or you can mm -hmm. say, I just want to keep the link as, as is and use the URL from the main site or a content site or something like that, if you have a site set up for content. Yeah. So it's pretty powerful. I think that's the better that way one? to go about it. Mm. Food for thought. So don't try and like fix something, um, just use something different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, there's always a better way to do things. Many, there's always many ways to skin the cat, you know, so there's, you just got to find the one that works for you. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Which is uh, usually the easiest one. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll let you do the next one because um, you know the two and two. Yep. Um, so uh, yeah, you got a question, right? So in your opinion, which one do you prefer, physical silos versus subfolder? Why subfolder or virtual silos, and why? That's from Daniel again. I think uh, physical silos make my anxiety reduced because it's nice to look at. <laughs> um, look, you know, if, if um, like, I guess this goes back to one of the first questions, you know, I think it's good to have a physical silo, but you don't want to go too deep, you know, um, and you don't want to go too flat either. Um, just, just find the balance that works for your site. It's, it's, up to the, it's up to the requirements of the site and the site you're building. Um, so, uh, you know, and um, yeah, I think that's that's uh, the best way to do it because um, no, no, no site's the same. Mm. Um, yeah. Plus, I feel like I feel like it's a it's a lot easier to manage because there's a central root of logic. Like it's yeah, it's exactly. Very, you know, like as soon as you see it, it's you can I can see it. Plus, also you're just like keeping the same logic, um, yeah. like moving forward. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, well, and the next one from Dan, which um, I'll take this one, which is a nice open question, I, I think, to the group. Um, have you seen any evidence to suggest keeping URLs as close to the root domain um, better for SEO? Um, is this true? I mean, I, I would think, probably um, say from, from a keyword in the URL point of view, having, having it as close to the root domain, so having like forward slash service, forward slash my service, then you know you don't have too many words or irrelevant words in the in the URL. Um, but other than that, I'm not really sure, and I haven't. I've been meaning to do a test on it for a long time, and maybe this is the uh, this is the uh, question I needed to do. Finally, do that test. Yeah. I don't know if you take um, much stock in anything that uh, that John Muir says, but um, we were back on Twitter. <laughs> he kind of like said, like, look, if you got a keyword in, in a URL, then generally it, it does perform better. But I've also seen that if there's if there's keywords in the URL with like with um, they tend to have like a, like a lot better traction. Plus, um, I think. Somewhere down here. Yeah. So Peter Machinkovich uh, also um, wrote in um, one important consideration for deep nested URL style, um, style URLs is that the character limit of URLs. So any exactly. um, that are 160 characters and above, um, which however many pixels, I think it's just like under six, six, yeah. 599 pixels, am I right in that? Um, could cause some issues. So that's also a really, really good one. Um, and someone else also said, which I I'm posting them here because I read that and I'm like, absolutely. Um, yeah, Will Brown also wrote in, like, if 
if it's if it's um really really quite deep just like you were saying in, in your presentation like if there's if it's too deep it's like um you know four sub um sub um, folders deep um then you might have a bit of an issue like with quick depth like people trying to find things um and like navigate around your site so you could yeah. kind of like lose people a little bit in um this like hyper managed um silo yeah and you can always get around that by you know linking from um key pages and navigation yeah yeah so yeah. one other thing like you know uh is like when you kind of talk about like you know siloing things and like having keywords in the url like you could have keywords in the url without siloing as well so even if it's a flat structure you could have example.com slash keyword hyphen post whatever slug that is and uh, or you could go for example.com slash a new subfolder with keywords then a new subfolder with your post slug right so it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive, like having the num like the keywords that you want in the URL without opting for a silo structure. Yeah, mm. exactly. I find it always interesting. <laughs> Sorry, okay. you go, James. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, often, often I see sites that have a subfolder, but if you remove the post and just have, like, if, if you had, like, mysite.com forward slash services forward slash my service, the example I keep using. If you remove my service and hit enter and nothing loads, you know, I think that's really bad from a user perspective because people mm. expect there to be content there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's uh, something you've got to consider as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think all that will be kind of like a moot point once Google hides the URL. So they're pretty close to doing it, I guess. I think in the next big version, maybe Chrome 87. Yeah, they're planning uh, to hide the URL. <laughs> it's, uh, so they'll just I'm, show the domain in there. I've so, already installed yeah. the, the Chrome extension to show um, the, the subdomain and, uh, and the um, protocol. Yeah, so I think they have a flag now. So I think in Chrome Canary, you have a flag where yeah. you can just toggle it and say you want to show the whole thing. That's how I used the flag. I did it ages ago. <clears throat> but um, apparently, apparently, they're going to remove the flag or something like that. I, I didn't oh, see really? it. Okay. I, I can't, I'm not sure exactly, don't hold me against that, but uh, I remember <laughs> reading something about it when I tried to do it like a year or two ago. Mm. Well, if anything, I feel like they'll, they'll want to test it just to see like um, how users interact with it. Yeah. Or don't. <laughs> or, well, uh, yeah. so and again, they like, can, just them and the they can do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll but get it on to a lot of people like so just one other thing that I have to add. So uh, I don't yeah. have anything that I can share as a valid test or anything, but from what I've seen, like you know, if your site is like really big, like you know, with a lot of authority, like you can get away with like you know more siloing. And if it's a smaller site, like once you go past your two, three levels, then like you know, it'll have a hard time ranking those pages as opposed to having a flat structure. So again, yeah. there is no hard data to kind of show this. This is something that yeah. I've seen with a site maybe a year ago. So when you have like, you know, site slash like, you know, service one slash service two slash service three, then it tends to get a lot harder to kind of, you know, get those pages indexed and ranked as opposed to having yeah. site.com slash like service one hyphen service two hyphen service three. So again, this is for like, you know, your run of the mill Joe the plumber site. Like if you're working with a really big site, I don't think that'll be a huge issue. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Well, Do we have so any other questions? Question. Yeah, we've got a few. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so Chris, well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Chris Lanois, um, and uh, apologies if I'm saying this incorrectly, because you're, you've are you been a long time friend and supporter. Um, do you then create a page called forward slash learn on top of the silo, or does it dynamically redirect? I think he was um, writing this as you were um, showing, I think, Beaver, Beaver Themer, so. Yeah, so um, 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 I think maybe it was more related to the archive page. Um, mm -hmm the answer to this question. So what you can do is um, 
generally in the past I've created a page um, with the same slug as um, like forward slash learn for example um, for a blog definitely um, so I do have a page set up um, but when you're using a custom post type you don't need to do that because you can create an archive um, archive page which I showed um, on the previous slide or previous slides or if you're using a taxonomy then you can create a layout in Beaver Thema. Um, let me show. Let me see if I can show it. If I did, I put a slide in. Yeah, there it is. So hopefully you can see that. Can I zoom in? No, it doesn't let me zoom in. Um, on the right hand there, it says post grids. So you can create basically a layout in Beaver Thema for an archive page or a blog, um, or like a taxonomy page. Um, so if you had forward slash services using the same example to keep it simple, um, on the services page, we've got all of the services that's linked, that's um, set in the in as an SEO service, for example. Um, or if you had a, a WooCommerce store and you clicked on um, a brand, you made a taxonomy for a brand, you make a theme and layout for that brand um, and then add it in and it's um, um, ready to go. You don't need to, you just, you create one layout for all archives and it, it just applies it and it's really easy. Um, but for a blog where it's like forward slash learn, yeah, you need to add, you need to create a page. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, we have one final question, which is actually your Sajo. So I'll let you take. Oh, that one. Uh, so that was more like a general <laughs> question. It wasn't related to your talk because we have so many WordPress experts here today. I thought I'll give it a try. So um, I've noticed that, like, you know, for one of my sites, I use the WordPress feed and it doesn't, like, get the featured image in there. So I always thought that, like, with RSS feed, it picks up the featured image and adds that to the feed. But for some reason, it didn't show up. So I was wondering if there is, I did see a few plugins for it, but is there a non-plugin way, like a uh, like a function that I can call in function.php or something like that, which would probably add that in there? So this is what this is different to the RSS feed question before where you're creating your own RSS feed, I'm assuming. Yeah, so this is for the RSS yeah. feed within this site, yeah. Yeah, um, I would say you have to ask, um, Will Brown, because he would know. <laughs> yeah, idea. he already mentioned something, so that is already even there. So, yeah. There we yeah, go. I'm pulling up a, um, a comment from Will that you can engage a developer to build um, WordPress uh, live li live free or hopefully library. I'm not sure. Um, Simple Pi, which handles RSS feeds if you need to display the other site's posts dynamically, which actually also really helps me because um, ideally. Um, you know, for my RSS feed, I'd, I'd, I'd like this to be dynamically so we don't have to, like, go in and do the um, import-export thing all the time. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Um, cheers, Will. Um, I don't think that we have any other questions. So I think um, for now, I think it's going to be it. Awesome. Um, really, so really how, many people, how, many people so have, uh, how many people have stuck around? <laughs> I don't know how many are still on the stream. <laughs> So we there are 18, 18 people watching right now. Oh, okay, awesome. <laughs> did we start with that many? Did, did um, everyone drop yeah, off yeah. a little bit? <laughs> yeah, Generally, like... when we start these things, I just like black out. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that was yeah, I'm not really sure. If we did have time at the end, I was going to do a live demo, but I think everyone's uh, exhausted, including me. So maybe it'll have to be another time. Well, like, we'd love to have let's you back. Take it... <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. Um, or we can kind of like put it to the audience um, for if it's if it we can like smash this in for the last fifteen minutes. Um, show of hands who or or even like just write in if you'd like to see like a live demonstration. Do do do. I would do. love to comment if you'd like to see the live demonstration. I mean, I would love to see it. I reckon we've got time. Um, okay. Like if you're if you're going up to it. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Set it up. All right, hang on. Before I do the live demo, just for the uh, 
Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, people are running in. Love it. All right, pull, pull my screen back on for a second. Will do. These are the image credits for the things I stole. Please don't sue me. <laughs> That'll do it. All right. Um, Love so some citations. Me, uh, yeah. <laughs> let me just set this <laughs> up. All right. While um while James is just setting this up, um you know this is a little bit of a different format. Usually we have two people who are um been taken through um SEO meetup um in this format. Um, if you really, really like this format of just having one person where we can uh, um, have a little bit more time to deep dive and um, even do some really great things like live demonstrations, um, let us know. Um, I, again, like um, contact me out of this, Nick Rainer SEO on Twitter or um, Sajo jo um, George um, on Twitter. Yeah, it's um, just Sajo George. Uh, Sajo, what's your... Too easy. It's too easy. Of Georgia. <laughs> um, too easy. I I think um for me personally, I, I love I love getting into it and especially being able to ask um more technical questions and having the time for it. So um if you're really liking the change up, um let us know. Should James be ready. Uh, muted. Beautiful. Yep. Should be ready. All right, let me uh Yep, share when you're ready, bud. Uh, I've got like seven different windows open. I think it's that one. <laughs> Just seven. Hope for the best. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I mean, different windows with tabs inside them. <laughs> ah, right. Okay. <laughs> windows, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My world. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me zoom in. Nope, not that one. That's on. Maybe this one. Not too much. That'll do. Hopefully, yeah. everyone can see that. Yeah, I can nice. see that. Nope, two, there, we there we go. All right. So um, this is just a um, site that I've got set up on my server that I use for all the demos and different things. I've got different plugins installed. Um, and um, I guess the first thing that I'll show is um, how to create a custom post type. Um, I think that's probably the most beneficial for everyone. So I've got pods installed. Um, all we've got to do is go mm -hmm. pods, open it up. Um, maybe I should make it a bit bigger. There we go. So I've got three pods already. Um, and you can see them on the left hand side here. I've got bars. Um, I've got a SEOs. Um, which was just another example that I set up um, for a different meetup. And then I've got a third one here, which you can see is a custom taxonomy. So this is the taxonomy I've created, and I've applied it to the bars post type. So when I say bars, I mean like actual like bars that you go and drink at. Um, <laughs> so if we just open this up, and I'll show you what this looks like, you can see it looks exactly the same as a normal post in the classic editor. Um, and um, you can create content, you can add a new post, um, you can have locations um, and then have locations for those bars, so it's uh, pretty good. Um, but let's create a new one. Um, give me an example, Nick. Yeah, um, are we just thinking of a, a bar? A post type example. No, 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 like a, a new, a new post type. Restaurants, all right. Restaurants? Yeah, yeah let's so, do, if we've got bars, like say, for example, we're at the same location, the bars um, on the rooftop and the restaurant is on the ground level. Well, that's okay, so cool. now now this is changing a little bit. So instead of creating a new <laughs> post type, maybe we should change the existing post type that we have to mm -hmm. venues. Because a, a restaurant and a bar is a type of venue. So you've really got to think about this is this is why I said it's ninety percent planning because you've really got to think about how mm. you want your data to be set out, um, and not only from an SEO and a link point of view, but from just a content management point of view as well. Mm. Um, so we've got bars and we've got bars and locations. So I probably wouldn't make a new post type um, 
but let's do something a bit tricky and I'm going to do it anyway. So Throw go a and create, I'm going to press you. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do is have two post types that use the same link, if that makes sense. No idea what's going to happen. I think I've done it before. I can't remember. So we use the singular label and we call it spell venue and venues for the plural. Mm -hmm. um, there's, an, there's an option here for advanced. What this does, this is the pod name. So this is um, what shows up in the URL when you when it says like post type equals bar venue. That's that's what shows up there. That's I guess the how it's um, programmatically referenced throughout the site. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the URL of the slug, but it does inherit it from that unless you override it. Um, so, so, for example, say, the, go. Sorry, Matt. Uh, a quick question: Like, what's the deal with the singular and plural? Like, why do you need that? Um, that's more from a WordPress point of view of how it handles um, the data. So, for example, if we go to bars, it says bars on the left hand side, and then it says bars here. But if we open this in a new tab, it says um, add new, and then you can put like add new bar. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, so it just it needs to know what the singular reference of it and the plural reference of okay. it is. It's more like a label. It labels it across the side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, going back to this, actually, we're not going to do venue because venue is a. Um, we're going to do um, what do we say? A restaurant. Yeah. Let's call it restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why is that not typing? Demo gods aren't being nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> What's an online of... demo without a hiccup? Exactly. <laughs> the joys. All right, got it. Um, let's just go with cafe, just to, be, just to make it a bit easier, a bit shorter. Um, mm -hmm. Cafes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put custom post type um, cafe there, and mm -hmm. um, I'm only doing that because I want to show how the link is put um, after after you create it. So that's really all the all the things that you need to know about creating a post type. Um, you can change it to a custom taxonomy, and they they do have the option for a settings page as well. But I've never really delved into that. Um, no, have never had a use for it. Um, so Cafes, we've got custom post type, cafe, create. So that's basically it. And you can see on the left-hand side, we've already got the new post type showing up. We've got cafe already. Um, so I can go into that. Oops. I can go into that now. Um, and add a new cafe. Give me an example of a cafe. Um, um, Two beans and I'm gonna go with the corner cornerstone cafe. <laughs> Very nice. Cornerstone cafe, which is a cafe at UTS. We like going to lunch for near the office. Lovely. Publish. Uh, the good old days. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Are we still going? In Melbourne, it's <laughs> yes. Oh, like yeah, in for Melbourne, you. the good old days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully soon you can uh, leave the house. <laughs> laughs in Sydney. So. <laughs> laughs in Sydney, yeah. <laughs> you guys got nothing on us now. <laughs> uh, All right, so you get to work from home. <laughs> I can work from home if I want to. I think, I every, I, I think everybody is all <laughs> working from home. <laughs> We we've um, um, we've gotten so far into this without the Sydney versus Melbourne debate. Let's not let's not divulge it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll try and bring it up afterwards anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So 
this is a really good example. Let me zoom into this. Oop, too much. Scroll up. Hopefully, uh, can you read that? Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. we've got a forward slash blog. Why is blog there? No idea why. Mm -hmm. Let's work out. Let's. Uh, um, if, okay. if you if you remember from my presentation, I'll show you why in a second. Then we've got CPT dash cafe, which is not ideal either. Um, it's not very user friendly and not very nice to look at. And then we've got Cornerstone Cafe, the page name. So let's set that up so that it's a little bit nicer, first of all. So we'll go back into pods here. We go to advanced options. But before I do, just to answer your question, labels here, you can set all the labels of singular, plural, add new. So you could do like add new cafe and just things like that. Um, so let's go. Um, into advanced options, which is the screenshot that I showed from my slides. So let's make it a bit bigger so you can all read. Um, so the first thing that we see is a few different options. You, know, you can just ignore those usually. Um, you can exclude it from the site search if you want, which is handy. Um, mm -hmm. um, and you know, user capabilities. This is just based on like if you if you set a user to access a post but not a page, you can change that and, or give them custom capabilities um, and give them a, their own capability. That's for more like user permissions between administrator, editor, and author and that sort of thing. That's pretty powerful there. Um, we can enable an archive page, which I'm going to enable, as I mentioned that before. And then we can choose the slug for the archive page. So um, we can do cafe or cafes, actually. Um, often when Often in the URLs of um, taxonomies, usually it's the plural version. So you have like bars, cafes, um, services, you may have noticed. Um, and um, it's good to keep with that kind of scenario. But the problem is the singular and the like a single post type usually uses the singular version of it, not the plural version. So you'd have a difference between cafe, forward slash cafe, and then the cafe name, and then deleting that, and then just going to forward slash cafe, there's nothing there. You know? So because the taxonomy is always using a plural version, and the, and the post type is using the singular version. But when you have your own post type, and your own, I guess, one, a single silo, an archive page, no taxonomies, what I like to do is I like to set this to plural, so the, over, the archive page override. Then you can go down and rewrite the slug to cafes as well. So that way, you've got the same thing as forward slash cafes, my cafe name, and then in, instead of having cafe, my cafe name. So that's, that's a really handy tip there. Um, and then you'll also notice it said, because here we can See how here it's got the singular? Oops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'll also notice it's got blog. Yep. And if we go back, that's due to this setting here, rewrite with front. Yep. So what that does is it's got a nice little um, pop up there. Um, essentially, what it does is it uses the permalink structure from your permalinks page, or it doesn't use the permalink structure from your permalinks page. Um, so if you were making, I guess, if you had a different silo, different types of blogs, so you had like forward slash blog, um, and then a specific silo, and then forward slash blog, a different silo, or you wanted to extend a different silo for the normal blog posts and have a different one, that's where you'd have that, that base. Um, but more often than not, than not, you just uncheck it. Um, so um, as well, so normally, as I said before, this is the singular version. Um, so like product, cafe, that sort of thing, bar. Um, and it even says to use the singular version here as well. Um, so I'll just leave that as singular and plural for the moment. And um, we should, and you can set like, when you create a new one, it's default. Um, and um, if it's exportable, then you can choose which options you want enabled for that post type. So sometimes what I like to do, which I did for the SEO services page on the prosperity site, is I disabled the editor. 
And what I did, and the reason why I did that is because I wanted to have my own custom fields. And I don't know if you, I'll just, just show you for, for an example. It should redirect me to the new site. So if we go to like um, this Here's page, Dan. for example, <laughs> Dan. Um, you'll notice we've got content, like body content, and then we've got a break, and then we've got more body content, right? So what I did to do that was I disabled the main editor and I added a, using an ACF above quote editor and below quote editor. Or you could just have, or, or you could leave that enabled and have that as the main one and then have another one for below quote. And have you can choose where you want your content to display. And all I did was in Beaver Thema is I just moved the content around and cho chose where I wanted that to go with using the key of the content. Um, so you can do cool things like that. You can turn on and off the featured image if you want the if you want to have an author. Um, have the WordPress custom fields, which is different to ACF. Um, and then, then you've got this section at the bottom called built-in taxonomies. So this is where it, you get to link your post type to a different taxonomy. So, because we've got WooCommerce enabled on this site, we've got all the product ones, and there's my location one from the bars. So I'm not going to enable that just for the moment in case it breaks everything, um, but I'll uh, enable that in a second. So I've changed my settings and I've changed my slug. What happens when we go back to here and refresh is you'll notice now that the slug changes. So again, big warning, be very careful with these changing these settings that can really affect your SEO if you don't add a redirect or, um, um, and you know, even if you do have a redirect, it still has some bit of a, a bit of a dip as well, sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. So now we can see it's nice. It's, we've got forward slash cafe, forward slash cornerstone cafe. Um, and then if we visit this link, We can see we've got Cornerstone Cafe, and this is the page for the Cornerstone Cafe. This is just the default Beaver Builder one. There's nothing built for it. Um, mm -hmm. And if we get rid of this and go to Cafes, notice we get a 404 page. So as I said before, what I like to do is I like to go into here and change the singular page slugs to cafes, save, refresh, and then we see now it says forward slash cafes, cornerstone cafe. And then when we go to the front end again, when I delete the name of the cafe, you'll notice now it shows an archive page of the cafes. So if, if we had more cafes, it would show multiple there. So that's that's a really it's I guess like from using the plugin from for a while, you kind of know how it works and how to set it up. So that's a really good way to do it. Um, and just from not from a like just from a usability perspective, really, um, and also a silo perspective because cafe is not the same as cafe. It goes down a different mm -hmm. silo. Um, so you want to make sure that they're the same. Um, yeah, so now let's let's try and enable locations. Hopefully, the site doesn't explode. I think it. I don't see why it wouldn't work. So For, what, would, um, what what I'm attempting? Yep, go. So, sorry, um, just with um, with that um, the root uh, subfolder cafes where it's got all the archive pages. Yeah. Is there? Um, can you also like add like a no index into that after the fact if you decide not to do anything or build anything else onto that? Um, that's a good question. I assume you can, but the, there's no Probably the SEO plugin will handle it. Yeah, that's right. The SEO plugin will handle it. Mm. Yeah. So if we go here and we go to SEO press, Awesome. Awesome. Just awesome. 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 With the custom archives, there we go. So then we can see cafes. There it is. 
then you just go no index and then no index is it yeah Sweet. yeah yep. yeah thanks for the reminder sage <laughs> no problem man i've learned so much from today so thank you <laughs> that's good no, no worries um so i don't think we should do too much more demo but let's go back into pods and let's see if sharing the location taxonomy between two different post types. Hopefully, I don't see why it wouldn't work, um, but we'll see. Um, you might have some detrimental effects with how it's displayed in the front end. Um, I think you can assign it no problem, but maybe you might need to change the loop, the archive loop of how it's displayed in the front end. Um, so you just got to be careful of that. Um, but you know, it makes sense to do it that way because you don't want to have two different location silos for the same content. You know, yeah. um, but as, as a workaround to that, what you'd usually do is just have one one post type called venues, and then have categories or taxonomies called venue type, and then have cafe bar, and then have another one called location. That would be the that's the optimal way. That's the best practice way to do it. Because um, you don't run into any templating issues, but uh, I'm interested to see if it works. So we just go and enable this location. And then now when we go to location on the left hand side, oh, sorry, cafes on the left hand side, we can see locations is there. And it should also be in bars. And if we go, we saw that the bars one had Sydney. Now we can see that this one also has Sydney. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign, just to test if this works, let's assign this to Sydney. Mm. Love my demo text there. I tried to type <laughs> lorem. I, tried, I started to type lorem and then I gave up. <laughs> All right. Then let's add it to a cafe. <clears throat> and then let's go to the location and view. Does it have both? It does. There we go. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, it's a. Uh, Let's uh, work around. Um, but uh, you know, I think best practice is to have, um, have venues and then have um, um, location as and, and venue type. But this seems to work no problem either. So you know, as I said before, many ways to skin a cat. <laughs> yeah. As is always yeah. the way. Thank you so much for your time, James. Yeah, no I worries. This is amazing. That like. I've always been like, you know, scared of like playing around with custom fields or custom post types. I always have yeah. to get developers involved. So this makes it a lot easier to prototype things. Mm. Exactly. And, yeah. And, well, yeah. not as well. Like, I'll show you quickly. Um, if, if you guys are interested, I'll show yeah. you Beaver yes, thing. So, mm -hmm. um, now that you can see that this Sydney page looks like crap, um, doesn't just the default one. So what you can do now is go into Beaver Thema, and the way Beaver Thema works is you just go new Thema layout, similar to making a post type, mm -hmm. and we can call it um, location <coughs> archive. Thema layout, we want to choose that. If it's anything else, that's something that's just used on a normal page, so it's very different. And then we choose, is this layout applied to the header? Is it applied to the footer? Is it applied to an archive page? So a page where you have, as I said before, a, a taxonomy. So you have multiple of single items. Or is it applied to a singular? You can also do 404 and part. Um, and part, I guess, is a feature over Elementor that Elementor doesn't have um, and Divi doesn't have as well. So you can create more advanced layouts by having like header. And then when you, oh, it doesn't show me without change, without creating it. but. Um, so you can assign like a above header, like you can assign a banner and put it above the header, um, above the header. So when you scroll, you've got the header at the top with a nice image and, and the H1 maybe, and then you've got a menu bar. And as you scroll, 
the menu bar sticks and the content keeps going underneath it. So you can do cool things like that. Um, it's a lot more of a um, advanced builder, theme builder, I think. Um, so if we go into archive and go add theme and layout, this is where we get control of where, how, and where we want this to apply. Um, so we've we've told them we've told Beaver that it's a, that it's an archive, and this is where we can choose where we want the archive to live. So you can create author archives to so have author profiles, um, date archives, search results, um, post archives, post category archives, which we now know is different because a post can have a post type can have its own archive separate to a category. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing with product archive, product category archive. And see the difference here, where I've enabled the archive page, we get cafe archive. But on the bar, I haven't enabled the archive page, so we only see the taxonomy, the, the location. And on the cafe, we see both. So let's assign it to bar archives. And let's also assign it to, um, actually, I wonder. See, this, this is where I'm saying, this is where I said before, it gets a bit funny with templating issues, because it shouldn't work, but it does. So maybe maybe <laughs> this will screw it up. Um, and then we'll just leave it as that for now. Um, and then you have certain rules. So you can say um, you can show it. You can show it to a specific user. You can show it to um, user role. So you can only show. You can like create new. You can just show it to um, someone who's a specific user that's logged in. You can show it to someone who's, um, or like if the ACF field on that post um, is a specific thing, show it then, or you can then have another layout and show that instead. Um, if the user is logged in, so login status, if they're logged in or logged out. And I like doing things like that for like an e-commerce site. If someone's logged in, I change the header of the site a little bit. Um, and then, um, so let's just delete all those because they're useless for now. And then we go publish, and then launch. So then this is where we can create our um, post types. Um, and this is just the default WordPress one, that, as you saw before. And this, this is a heading, so this is a H1. But instead of putting the text here of like um, Sydney, we don't, we don't code that in, we don't hard code that in, we apply that dynamically. So we press the plus button on the right hand side here and go connect it to the archive title. And then it, autom it automatically puts it in based on which archive you're looking at. So that, that's, the, that's the cool thing about it. And then we've got posts. So posts we can choose to show in a nice um, grid view. So then it shows up like this, mm -hmm. um, which is already pulling in the, the cafe. So that's that's kind of how you um, make archive layouts, and it's pretty it's pretty much exactly the same for singular layouts, but instead of posts, the group of posts you have, you know, your body content and other custom fields you want to put in on the page. Um, so yeah, it's uh, pretty powerful, pretty powerful stuff. And this is where, this is this is why post types, as I said throughout the whole presentation, post types were traditionally for big, expensive development teams, and big sites. But now you know you you saw how easy that was for me to do. Mm. You know, so that that's why it's. Uh, I think there's no reason not to have a good silo structure in your site now. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff, Matt. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, no. James Carmody. Thank you so much. No I think we'll wrap it up there. <laughs> yes, it's been uh, two hours um, and 15 minutes. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, one final thing, James, where can someone um, reach out and contact you after this? Um, I will bring up my slides once again, last time. And I've got a QR code. Ooh. On my link. There you go, you can start it in. 
I think you, all right, you should be able to drag it in now. And drag in I shall. There you go. So there's my email. Um, and that's a QR code you can scan to add me on LinkedIn. Yeah. Or my LinkedIn profile. If you don't so. know where it is, if you don't know um, how to use a LinkedIn thing, um, like up in the up in the search bar, it's like this little it looks like a little mini QR code thing. Press that and it'll just come up with um, something that you can look. You've got your code and the scan thing. So you literally you can just do that and bada bing, bada boom. That's coming up there soon, shortly. Soon. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you LinkedIn. so much. And um, leave me a message when you add me on LinkedIn too because I don't accept people who don't leave messages because I get a lot of spam. So. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I send you the I, default I one? Either. Like I saw you in your network and like, <laughs> I think you will be a great connection. Um, yeah, oh, I've, the, got, the, I've got heaps of, as as heaps of up, links you if back you like. Back <laughs> <service. Yeah. laughs> on, All Eddie. right, thanks so much, guys. All right, we'll end it there. Thank you so much. Well, thank, you. thank you guys hey, for having Nick, me. I just need to talk to you really quick for a sec. Don't disconnect, Nick. Oh, she's gone. <laughs>